Hey, Engagement fans, welcome back to the Engagement Studio. My name is Spencer Gracky. And I'm Anthony Edwards. We're members of the Insights team here at Quantum Workplace. And today we're going to talk about strategies for your new hire experience and onboarding. Uh, it's hopefully getting them off on the right foot as they join your organization. Absolutely. So we're talking to managers today. And really what we want to ask is, managers, do you have a strategy for onboarding your new hire employees? And really, we want to talk about that strategy as it relates not to just, do you have a packet to explain benefits? Or are you explaining where the, where the different piece, or places are in the office? Are you giving office tours? Are you showing people how to log into email? But we're really talking about that strategy to create a real experience for employees. Absolutely. And one of those first strategies involves considering the time between accepting a job offer and walking in the doors for the first time. So when you accept the job offer, there's a lot of excitement there. We want to capitalize on that. And there's a couple ways in which we can do so. So first, think about sharing something fun about the company or your team. Uh, there's something there when you share a story or a picture or a photo that helps people get acquainted with the culture of the company. Next, consider how can we encourage and empower our team members to reach out to that individual before they walk in the doors uh, with a message of congratulations or we're excited to have you. There's a lot of different mediums to accomplish this. LinkedIn is a great tool to use, inviting someone to connect, sharing a message with them, uh, saying that you value them. Email and text work just as well. And then lastly, we want to think about these emotions associated with someone walking in the door for the first time. There's some stress when you go into a new place, it's a new building, there's new faces, there's a lot of new things happening. So how do we alleviate that stress? We can give them a heads up as to what to expect. Things like what to wear, when to show up, even should I pack a lunch, can help alleviate some of the stress associated with arriving on your first day. That brings us to our next strategy. Anthony touches a little bit on kind of that arriving the first day. And so that next strategy that I want to talk about is a very granular discussion around what are those first 10 minutes of that first day. And when I'm talking about those 10 minutes, I'm talking about getting the absolute details right. So as a manager, are you meeting your new hires outside of the lobby of your office? Because that is that when you meet somebody outside of the office and not make them come to you and figure out where you are or where your desk is in their new workplace, that demonstrates to that new hire that they're important. They are, are being welcomed. People are setting time aside to just for them to create that experience. And beyond just welcoming and being a smiling face outside of the office and bringing them in, really figure out what is what is going to happen after that first 10 minutes. Do they just get to see the office? Are you just showing them their, their space where they're going to sit? Or do they have a, a plan for what's happening next? It's really important that you get very detailed with your approach to designing that first interaction. It's a great point. And what I'll mention too is the next strategy, there's the pressure is off of you. It can be off of you as the manager. There's a lot of things that you have to do. Yes, of course. But how do we empower the rest of the team to take a role and be a part of this onboarding experience? Uh, and so as we look at how do we empower the rest of the team, we want to really focus on how do we start to encourage them to build relationship. Uh, this is a key building block of a successful team. It, it incorporates things like collaborative nature and supportive uh, environment and efficiencies as you build relationships and bonds with other people. So some of the strategies to consider within that vein are just allowing your people time within that first day with the new hire to introduce themselves, encouraging them and allowing them time to do so stopping by for coffee, stopping by uh, before lunch, just introducing themselves and showing a friendly face is going to go a long way. And then another more kind of structured format of that is scheduling one-on-one -on -one time with each team member with that new hire. This is going to allow them to have some time to connect with that person at a more intimate level, understanding their personality, their role, their background, and poking questions, uh, posing questions to understand greater context around their own job and how that person can kind of assist with their growth. 
And then lastly, I know when I first started, uh, most of my jobs, I spent most of my time on the company intranet or website, trying to connect faces and names, uh, knowing, trying to figure out who to go to for information uh, and who, just who was who. But you can help as a manager in this case by providing them with a document or information around the people on your team, who is who, who can answer this question for you, who can answer that question for you, possibly some personality traits or work habits can be incorporated into those things uh, as you ask your team members to contribute. So we want to empower the new hire with information so they feel comfortable and they feel empowered to reach out and get the information they need, but also start to build those relationships that are going to be, be key for an effective and efficient team. Yeah, and to build on that idea of get, getting new hires the information they need, that also relates to managers getting the information that they need to design that process better. And that brings us to our, our next point, and that is managers, you must get feedback on the experience that those new hires are having. And so one thing I need you, I, I urge you to consider is that as managers, you cannot define whether or not you have an effective onboarding process. The extent to which you have an effective and efficient onboarding process is solely upon the assessment of the new hire. And that means you have to collect and understand what that person's view of their experience was. And so at Quantum, we encourage our managers to launch these one-on-one -on -one conversations to get and interact about what is the real experience that's going on? And even launching feedback sessions to understand how can I as a manager improve the experience that my new hires have. It's vital that you really get the voice of the person who's going through that experience and not just be the expert or have the ego to say, we're doing this the right way. It's important to be kind of vulnerable and being able to adjust your approach and continuously make things better. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that last point. And really, we're talking about onboarding people. And people are humans and humans have different needs. And so don't put your onboarding process, once you figure it out, on autopilot. We wanna understand how we can be flexible and adjust based on the feedback we get and what people desire and, and what their needs are. So that's the last point I'll make piggybacking off of what you just mentioned. Absolutely. And, and that really goes to speak to managers that the more authentic that you can be towards your new hires in that onboarding process, the more effective, effective and efficient that you're going to, to make that overall process. Absolutely. So now let's go make work better every day. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.